Greetings, everyone. I'm Declassified Dave, one-third of the Hush Hush Society Conspiracy Hour podcast, and you're listening to Infinite Rabbit Hole. back to the infinite rabbit hole and happy new year i am your host jeremy today we're gonna (laughs) jake don't laugh today we're gonna jump into part four of the mind bending brain melting topic which is the assessment and analysis of gateway process brought to you by none other than jeff steele that's his that's his new nickname, Jeff Steele. <laughs> How are you doing, Jeffrey Steele? I don't I don't really like that nickname, to be completely honest with you. That's it. Jeffrey Bourne. No. Jeffrey <laughs> Bourne Steele. How about Steelborn? Nope. No, nope. Jeffrey nope. Bourne you don't get a Steel. Cool Man, I can't even pick my own cool name. That's... You can't pick your own cool name. You are no one is allowed to pick their own nickname. It's That's given racist. to them. That's yeah. racist. <laughs> Cancel us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm good, bro. I'm ready to get into this dense document again and leave Jake in the dust. I literally watched Jake's brain just melt out of his left ear last time. Mm. It was it's funny. And everyone else did, too, because we put it on YouTube. That's right. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Jeff hasn't seen it yet because he hates us. Um, but anyways, I put in some good hard work and I am now doing the video editing since Jeff is lazy and doesn't like to help us and he hates us. I haven't seen the actual edit. Well, you should. You won't, but you should. It's pretty good. I'll, wa- I'll watch the video when Jake listens to one of my shows. I have what, more than one. Uh, you, no, those weren't the terms that you just more threw than out. one. More. <laughs> <laughs> you host this show. How do you not watch it? How do you not check out our stuff? You got to see the picture I put up for digital apps. Because I, I hear we have the conversation. I don't want to go back and listen to the conversation again. No, it's you weird. have you have to watch the visual aids I put up on YouTube. They're hilarious. Aids. Yes. Speaking of aids, um, so visual aids. Visual well, aids. Like all when Jake of, said horse aids. crap, I put a picture of a horse crapping. That's awesome. Yeah. Speaking of visual aids, so we've been doing a tremendous amount of work, and we'd like to announce for everyone listening that the store is up and running again. We are going through Redbubble now. It's a Infinite TAC RH TAC Pod. And we, uh, yeah, if you go into the merch tab of the Infinite Rabbit Hole page, it goes right to it. I got some merch just to test it out. I got big mouse pads, so this is one of them. Of course, you have to be watching us on YouTube to see this. Yeah, for sure. If you're listening, you're like, what? I don't see anything. Well, it's your own fault. And then this one, the Bigfoot Approves nipples. So this is definitely going to my desk at work. (laughs) Um, And then, yeah, we have... Limited options compared to what was on the Printful store. Uh, But we have just a tremendous amount of stickers. We're working on uh, art pieces you can use for like 7,000 by 7,000. I don't know, whatever the the rating is. Yeah. And so we can, uh, I don't know, we can blow them up on a big old posters and they're going to be super crystal clear and stuff. Um, a lot of different stickers for whatever our episodes have been. So if you want a Thunderbird sticker, Kelly Greenman, um, you know, whatever. Uh, we got a tier 3B sticker, you know, all, all kinds of stuff. UAPs, aliens, um, all types of cryptids, Bigfoot, a lot of Bigfoot stuff. Um, but yeah, go on over there and check it out. I ordered... I think 16 stickers the other day, and I paid a whole whopping $20 um, because as you 
go up in the amount of things that you want from uh, Redbubble, you get a discount, you know. So, um, but yeah, really not that big of a deal and certainly go check it out. We've put a lot of work into it, but I think that uh, I think that the travelers, you guys are going to be pleasantly surprised with the amount of stuff you can get. Um, and the prices are way better. Uh, like way, way, like the shirts are $25 cheaper than they were going through Printful. Yeah. So, cause all of Printful's stuff they were ordering overseas, you know, there were supply chain issues. So they jacked up the price on us. So we were actually losing money every time someone <laughs> bought a, a shirt. <laughs> um, we'd have to pay Printful like five bucks. Cause it's like, well, we're not going to sell a $40 t-shirt that just has a Bigfoot on it. So, right. um, but yeah. Very cheap, uh, but good quality, and I'm super happy with these uh, mouse pads that came out, and I'll be sure to give updates as I get the all the stickers probably next week. Those things are big, dude. Those are big mouse pads. Yeah, there's two different options. There's the little ones, the little um, like 8x9s or whatever, tiny ones. This is the 12x14, so they're, they're pretty gnarly, um, and I'm very stoked at the quality. I was... Iffy, I was like, well, this is just a picture on the screen. How's the quality going to be? It came in today, and I'm pleasantly surprised. And for all of you out there that don't want to support us and rep our name and our logo, no worries. We got you, too. There's a bunch of cryptid stickers with absolutely nothing that says infinite rabbit hole on it. You're welcome. Well, yeah, I mean, that's (laughs) being on Redbubble. It means that people that have never listened to our show before could find our you know, page because of the tags that are Mm -hmm. in there. So we have some stuff that has infinite rabbit hole somewhere on there, infinite rabbit hole podcast, whatever. Um, If you want to rep this show, but again, if you want something that doesn't have any infinite rabbit hole stuff on it, you just want a cool sticker. Most of the stuff on the store is just cool stickers. Uh, And we're going to try to do a uh, tagged sticker for each category, like a really cool one. Um, But yeah, tons of stuff on there. I'm super stoked about it. And there you go. And all of the designs are unique to Infinite Rabbit Hole. You won't find them anywhere else. Yeah. They are unique. They will never be, well, unless someone steals our shit. Which <laughs> could probably happen. But we did it first. Every single thing is unique and original. Yep. Check them out. You haven't seen them before. You may have seen something similar, but you haven't seen the ones that we that Jake did. Jake. Jake's the mastermind here. There is no we in this. Jake did it all. So make sure to say thank you to Jake and uh, check out his work, please. All right. We've uh, we've tortured those few souls that really hate chit chat on podcasts <laughs> for seven minutes now. Oh, man. And, so we need to go another 20 probably. Well, yeah. So how was your day today? I was it was. It was okay. I did 50 miles on the bike. I rode over to uh, the Ventura DMV uh, to collect okay, my title for that bike. <laughs> and it right, turns right. out I didn't have to go there because they were going to mail it to me. I was like, oh. oh that's hilarious. All right. Yeah. Well, Jeffrey, since you, uh, you know, yeah, since you rudely interrupted Jacob there. Yeah. Let's uh let's give it to you, man. <laughs> Sorry, Jake. That's what you get for making fun of me for telling everybody Happy New Year. Um, oh, and but... Happy New Year, everybody. Happy yeah, New Happy Year. New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. I mean, I couldn't uh, help it. It was so dumb. <laughs> we should make a sticker. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make a sticker for Jeff. I'm going to take his face and put a Happy New Year, like, spiral around. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Yeah, do it. I'm going to post that meme on the Facebook group. It'll be the number one seller. It's got a picture of me on it. <laughs> Who's this uh... bald weirdo on here? <laughs> Ooh. All right, Jeffrey, take us away. Where are we starting off at today, man? Yeah, man. So if you haven't been paying attention, and which Stop is probably half, probably half of you guys. I know Jake wasn't paying attention, so that's at least a third of us. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> we are on section 18 of the analysis and the assessment of gateway process document can be found on the CIA library. Okay. Analysis and assessment of gateway process. Section 18 Jake got lost on the last one towards the end. We were talking about holograms and stuff, and that's okay. It's pretty dense, so no shame there, Jake. But uh, you might get lost in the next however many episodes we do because it's actually getting a little bit more 
dense. So you listen here. I've done so much research and trying to figure out what holograms are, and it hasn't helped at all. So you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So getting into it, um, well, you'll see. So section eighteen, time space dimension. Ooh. Up to this point, our discussion of the gateway process has been relatively simple and easy to follow. Now the fun begins. Gateway involves more than just perception of those aspects of the universal hologram, which can be accessed in the dimension of time-space as we know it. To explain how and why human consciousness can be brought to transcend the limitations of time-space is the next task which must be addressed. How to do this, we must first appreciate what time and space are in order to understand how the dimension that they constitute can be transcended. Physicists define time as a measurement of energy or force in motion. In other words, it is a measurement of change. However, in order for energy to be in motion, it must first be limited in some way within the confines of some sort of vibratory pattern so that its confinement gives it the capacity for being contained at a specific location which is distinguishable from another location. Energy which is not confined is force without limit, without dimension, without the limits of form. It is infinity, cannot move because there is nothing beyond infinity and is therefore outside of the dimension of time is also beyond space because that concept implies that a specific energy form is oh that a specific energy form is limited to a specific location and is absent from other locations but if energy is in the state of infinity there are no boundaries no here to di to differentiate from there no sense of area energy in infinity means energy uniformly extended without limit it has no beginning no end no location it is conscious force, the fundamental primal power of existence without form, a state of infinite being. Energy is infinitely, energy in infinity is said to be completely at rest and therefore cannot generate holograms so long as it remains utterly inactive. It retains its inherent capacity for consciousness in that it can receive and passively perceive holograms generated by energy in motion out in the various dimensions which make up and create the universe, but it cannot be perceived by consciousness operating in the active universe. Energy in this state of inactive infinite infinity, excuse me, is termed by physicists as energy in its absolute state or simply the absolute. Between the absolute and the material universe in which we experience our physical existence are various intervening dimensions to which human consciousness in altered states of being may gain access. Theoretically, human consciousness may continue to expand the horizons of its perceptual capability until it reaches the dimension of the absolute, at which point perception stops because the absolute generates no holograms of or about itself. Mm. Dense. Yeah. Not gonna lie, I got lost in a lot of it. I had to retrace a couple times, you know, go back and reread what you just read and kind of dumb it down for myself. But basically, from what I got from it, is it it's a long, drawn-out explanation about how energy is sort of like its own dimension. But then again, it, it goes on to talk about multiple dimensions laying and crisscrossing through the dimension, the physical dimension that we see and we live in every day. So they're, they're talking about also, they're also talking about how the human mind can learn to access these dimensions as well. And that I, I like the definition that they gave there for time. That was, that was a pretty, pretty good. That's a very scientific explanation for time. And I mean, it's, it's kind of confusing, but at the same time, it works. Um, but to get back to dimensions and this absolute that they were talking about. I don't even it's like, all right, 
I kind of get what they're talking about, but to translate it or to put it in words <laughs> it, instead of just reading it off of the paper that we just read is very difficult. And honestly, I'm not even sure I have a clear picture of it myself. I think that's why they explained it that way, because that's really the only way you can explain it from the perspective of the, you know, of this guy that we've been reading this document from, you know, what right. I'm saying? Like, as he's been explaining everything else, like this is really the only way to explain what time space really is. You know, he's explained the difference between energy that's confined and not confined and how it separates basically the finite from the infinity. Right. So it's like, mm -hmm. he, I don't know. He just basically explained what time space is, which I think we all kind of have an, a basic understanding of on some level. Basic. Yes. But he also dove into other things too, like other dimensions, the, 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 the lattice work in my own words of dimensions that, that exist inside and around ours, our physical dimension, the one that we see or we perceive as a physical dimension. There's others such as, um, uh, you know, skip that. <laughs> um, but they, <laughs> they did also talk about how, there's no true thing as distance, like physical distance outside of our dimension, right? There's between point A and point B isn't necessarily a straight line. And I know a lot of people, the first thing that they go to when they hear that is they, they hear wormholes, right? Where they, the, the famous example is taking a piece of paper and folding it in half, right? You take that that line drawn on a piece of paper, you fold it in half, and now point A and point B are literally touching each other. Well, that's not that's not really what they're talking about. They're talking about something completely different where outside of the physical dimension, inside of these perceived dimensions or unperceived dimensions by the, the, the typical human mind, uh, physical distance doesn't exist. Time distance doesn't necessarily exist. And if you can basically get your mind outside of the physical dimension and into one of these other dimensions, you can have access to a multitude or a plethora, very, very large amount of information from both past, future, and present. So Which basically is exactly what happens when you smoke DMT. Yeah. So basically this whole thing is built upon a theory that there is multiple dimensions besides what we know of and can show and prove <clears throat> because as far as i know no one has been able to prove that there is another dimension no one has been able to prove that you can consciously access other dimensions with That's the exception true. of with the exception of these individuals that were involved in this study which no you're going by word of mouth that they're nope. saying they can. So they're like, oh, nope. you can, I guess. Nope. Really? Nope. Incorrect. The, I mean, <laughs> dude, they're literally CERN is peering into alternate dimensions. The head of CERN has come out. I've, I've talked about this before. He's come out and said, we're literally pull, peering into other dimensions and bringing back data. They know other dimensions exist. And I, I don't know the number, but they know, I think it was like 11 or 14 other dimensions known and estimated infinite number right who knows but but where's the well, write-up and evidence of that besides just him saying we cern didn't. i mean you'd have to i don't know you'd have to read cern's documents on that shit but there's yeah. probably articles peer-reviewed or not uh to mm. talking about it this is i mean i've heard of it too but one thing that i want the listeners to understand and maybe clear up for for you guys too not that you guys don't know but there's a there's a difference between dimensions and like a parallel world. So it's not like they're looking into the the parallel world where, you know, Jake is from Korea or like anything like that where the ground is up and the sky is down. That's not that's not what they're doing. They're looking into a different dimension, a completely different dimension. They're not looking on the x y z axis. They're looking on axes that we cannot perceive without the proper tools. But that was the CERN was recent. This was what in the eighties, and well, then it was declassified in the in two thousand three. Let's, so this let's, was whole based gotta, off of a yeah. yeah but you got to you got to understand how long does it take for the government to admit to something, to 
to come out and say, yes, we were or we do we do have access to an alien body. We have it in Area 51 or. Well, or yeah, whatever. but I mean, they did a whole like opening ceremony for CERN. It was super demonic and stuff. Well, like, no, they're, that was they're all the, about it. That was for the tunnel. That was for the Gothard based train tunnel. That oh basically ends at the entrance of CERN. But I mean, kind of what Jeremy's saying, I mean, they were doing this stuff, you know, the military and these black budget programs were doing this kind of stuff. And then as the information, maybe it wasn't even quite public yet, but then they grant access to certain scientific organizations like CERN to do these things still under the radar. Then it comes out, oh, look, this type of information is real. Oh, and by the way, there's already organizations with government grants doing studies on these things, which is a whole other rabbit hole for me. But you, you gotta like for me when I hear CERN, right, and you, mm. you hear about all the things that CERN's doing, demonic. Well, not not just that because I don't disagree with you, but at the same time, that's what they're showing you. That's what they're allowing you to see. They're controlling Mm -hmm. the information. They're controlling the knowledge of what's actually going on. Right. So CERN, honestly, if you, if, if I had to put my honest opinions out there, it is a cover, right? They are slowly letting go of some of the information, just scratching the surface of what they can do. Right. That's it. Um, I think that this, this paper that we've been reading now for a couple of months, this analysis and assessment of gateway process is fascinating because this is, I mean, Jake, come on, you, you, no, you're, no, you're I, in the military. You look, look at this paper and you, you can the, tell that this is I was, legit. Yeah. I was like going to mention that, that the fact that this one individual page is completely like slanted. This is exactly how important it, documentation oh, is copied. <laughs> it's hilarious. To the fucking T. Um, but <laughs> And then how it says approved for release, and then the thing at the bottom is lined up with the page, but then the whole thing is shifted. Yes. Yeah, um, dildo at the government printed this out, yeah. For yep. sure. Oh, yeah, someone who truly didn't care printed this out. Probably, <laughs> well, you know, someone in government admin. workers that listen, but... <laughs> so, basically, I should more or less take this as an actual finding... Unless this is another one of those controlled information, then that that you know that could be the thing too, is because if you if you look at CERN through what I just said, right, that this is controlled information coming out, they're filtering it, they're allowing you to see certain things because they eventually technology has to move, right? It right. has to move. You have all these people out there that are saying, you know, government has this, the government has that, and eventually the government's going to let out a little bit here and there just to kind of take the pressure off of them and get a whole bunch of people to look at at dangling keys is basically what it is, right? We're a whole bunch of people right, looking right. at our parents' keys and we're just fascinated with it, but really our parents are running the entire household. Um, that's a good analogy. It is. I mean, that, um, that, that's what it is. <laughs> but that's the same thing that this paper could be. You know what I'm saying? It, it, yeah. You have to think yeah, of it. We said that at the very beginning, right? That was right. the caveat right. at the beginning. Like, yeah, we pulled this off the CIA library. However, controlled opposition and like government disinformation is a thing. So, mm-hmm. right. So, yes. Is this is this stuff like fa- absolutely fascinating? Yes, because it comes from a reputable source. But at the same time, you have to take everything with a uh, a grain of salt. So, like I understand what this number eighteen is saying to me, or what they're implying, or you know, trying to explain and all mm-hmm. that stuff. I, I get it, but it's just like it, it trips me out when they're all like, "Oh, and then energy in infinity." It's like, "All right, show me one study where you guys reached infinity." that you would possibly know that that's what happens. Well, it's theoretical, right? But like right. it's, it's kind of like the I don't know the exact like terminology for this, but it's like the polarity of things, you know. You know that if there is a finite, there has to be an infinite as well. If there's a positive, there has to be a negative of some kind. So hmm. it could just be inferred on that level, like maybe they're just guessing, hmm. but at the same time, I mean they do it's, this shit a lot. Right? It's the whole, so. That's the whole basis behind why the scientific community believes that there's dark matter. If there's mo- if there's matter or antimatter, right? Yeah. If there's matter, there has to be the opposite. Everything, everything in the world has a negative and positive, which creates a neutral, right? So if there is matter, there has to be antimatter, something that 
physically I, I i don't know if it's necessarily antimatter as you would define it by just the name like antimatter when i hear antimatter mm-hmm. i hear the reduction or the elimination of matter right yeah, nothingness so, right exactly so it i don't know if that's quite the definition i'm not too familiar with that but that's kind of the same thing that that jeff was just kind of talking about uh, that you always have to have the opposite of something else. So finite and infinite, right? This is sure. this is all stuff that that you know the scientific community, the physicists out there, uh, people with way way more folded and and wrinkly Mega brains mind. than I have. <laughs> wrinkly um, brains, <laughs> wrinkly brains. So many more wrinkles in their brains. Um, I'm over here making soup sandwiches. <laughs> soup sandwiches <laughs> um no i mean yeah i'm i'm down with it but it's just like it i don't know it's just interesting it's interesting that it's like it's building on itself but use like using theories and stuff so it's like well okay so when you get all the way down to the bottom of it um what part is crap and what part is like actual mm-hmm. things that were observed and studied and all kinds of stuff um, I, but also, how would we reach out to this individual who wrote this and get don't. them on the show? <laughs> and <laughs> if they released don't. it, you don't. It's. I mean, we could. There is a whole book written on this. There is a book called the assessment and or the analysis and assessment and gateway process. Mm-hmm. Um, as it is, uh, do, 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 do. hold on. There is a book. Trying to get fuck the author. book, read the document. Anyways, yeah, but there, there is, <laughs> there is a a whole, whole book about this whole thing. So if anybody wants to dive deeper, which is eventually I will want to dive deeper into. Yeah, it. when he talks about holograms and all of it, all of holograms. <laughs> oh, there is actually a book like this. This whole thing, this document. They made it into a book. They literally just made it into a book. It probably has like awesome pictures. And shit Dude, too. you can get the tapes, the focus tapes, which we haven't even yeah. got to yet in here. You yeah. know, the, the we'll get to it. But spoiler alert, basically, they, they're using audio techniques to invoke this gateway process in people. That was the studies that were done. And you better not tapes, put a hex on me. Those <laughs> audio tapes you can buy. Are they real? Who knows? But I've heard people who have them who have told me some crazy stories. So. Well, let's let's get moving, so so we can maybe keep this under ten ep- episodes, ten parts. But yeah, that's not gonna happen. Not uh, I don't think so. We are <laughs> we're on what? Uh, nineteen, nineteen, yeah, nineteen. We're, out of, we're out almost of, halfway. No, we are halfway because there's thirty seven. So eighteen would have been half of thirty six. So we're we're literally just over halfway right now. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff, you <laughs> dick. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Nerds. All right. Anyways. All right. So section 19, <clears throat> intervening dimensions. So this is going to kind of talk a little bit more about the multi-dimension type thing. So since the absolute is conscious energy in infinity without boundaries, it occupies every dimension to include the time-space dimension in which we have our physical existence, but we cannot perceive it. It overlays everything as do many of the intervening gradients or dimensions through which the energies of the universe pass on their way to and from their home in the state of infinity. To enter these intervening dimensions, human consciousness must focus with such intense coherence that the frequency of the energy pattern which comprises that consciousness, the brainwave output, can accelerate to the point where the resulting frequency pattern if displayed on an oscilloscope, would look virtually like a solid line. Achievement of this state of, excuse me, achievement of the state of altered consciousness sets the stage for perception of non-time space dimensions because of the operation of a principle in physics known as Planck's distance. This is an aspect of quantum mechanics which applies to the fact that any oscillating frequency, such as a brainwave, reaches two points of complete rest, which constitute the boundaries of each individual oscillation, movement up or down. Without these points of rest, an oscillating wave pattern 
would be impossible since the points of rest are required to permit the energy to change direction and thus continue vibrating between rigid limits. But it is also true that when for an infinitesimally brief instant, say that 10 times fast, Mm -hmm. that energy reaches one of its two points of rest, it clicks out, quote, of time space and joins infinity. There's an image coming for this. That critical step out of time space occurs when the speed of the oscillation drops below whatever that mathematical number is, 10 to the negative 33 power centimeters per second, Planck's distance. Okay, so I could have just said that. The critical step out of space time occurs when the speed of the oscillation drops below Planck's distance. To use the words of Bentov, Quantum mechanics tell us that when distances go below Planck's distance, we enter, in effect, a new world. To return to our case in point, the human consciousness wave pattern reaches such high frequency that the pattern of clickouts comes so close together that there is virtually continu- continuity in it. Then a portion of that consciousness is actually postulated to establish and maintain its information collection function in those dimensions located between time space and the absolute. Thus, as the almost continuous clickout pattern establishes itself in continuous phase at speeds below Planck's distance, but before reaching the state of total rest, human consciousness passes through the looking glass of time space after the fashion of Alice being her journey, beginning her journey into Wonderland. The gateway experience with its associated hemisync technique that we talked about earlier is apparently designed if used systematically and uh, patiently to enable human consciousness to establish a coherent pattern of perception in those dimensions where speeds below Planck's distance apply. This holds true irrespective of whether the individual is exercising his consciousness while in his physical body or, or whether he is doing so after having separated that consciousness from the physical body the so-called out-of-body state mentioned earlier. Hey everybody, bear with us while we take this quick break. Okay, so... <laughs> this, Man, this, I didn't this, think I was ever going to find something in this that I totally understand. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, that, oscilloscope, yeah! <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny. Oh, man. All right. So anybody that knows os- oscilloscopes, they basically measure out sine waves. OK, they, they measure sine waves. And this is exactly what this is talking about. Sine waves. If you're watching on YouTube, I'll make sure to put a nice picture down there of what an oscilloscope is or an oscope uh, as it's nicknamed and what it does. Right. So basically just creates sine waves and then they just go up and down like this. And they're saying that at the top, which is called a peak and at the bottom, which is called a valley is the point of where they stop for a brief second. Okay. So that's point number one, when it gets to the top and the bottom, the peak and the valley, that right there is when you exit our dimension and you enter the infinite as the absolute. So the absolute has absolute knowledge inside of the infinite. Okay. So you're talking about your peaks and your valleys. Now, if you're asking, well, it has to have that travel down to from the peak to the valley and valley to the peak. How are we constantly having a consistent continuity in these dimensions that you're talking about? Listen here. Okay. I used to be an electrician in the U.S. Navy. So I know I'm a professional. Trust me. There is electricity called AC, alternating current. And basically, this is a generator. Okay. Generator has three flaps or, or, or arms, right? And flaps. it just con- flaps constantly moves around. Okay. And I will also add this picture into YouTube. AC waves looks like three because of the three arms sine waves going up and down like this. Okay. And on top of those waves, because each one of the sine waves is slightly off than the other. You can basically ride the tops, the peaks of the sine waves and the bottoms of the sine waves perfectly. Now, think of it like this. A generator. Okay. Can you run electricity perfectly 
off a generator to where you don't notice that it's constantly clicking on and clicking off. Because that's basically what a sine wave is. Okay, it is on, off, on, off, on, off. Right. And the reason why we perceive electricity as constant, as consistent and always flowing is because of the peaks and valleys and how there are so minute gaps between the peaks and valleys that our electricity, the lights above my head right now, look to be consistent. Yo, is that why when you look at like a sign, like a LED sign with your phone, it sits there flashing and stuff? Is it picking up those on-off motions? Exactly. Just like when you record a fan. <laughs> Just like you record a fan. Exactly the same thing. Um, now, a lot, of the, you got to understand, a lot, a lot of things use DC, which is a steady stream of electricity. Um and that's direct current and it's just not as powerful. So if anything needs a certain amount of voltage, anything above like 24 volts, you're basically going to have to go to AC alternating current. Right. And, but that that's literally what they're telling you right now. Okay. That if they can create these sine waves to be so smushed together, that if you can create it, take a step back here, this document is literally building on top, on top of itself. If you go back to the first episode and we started talking about, um, syncing up brain waves with the waves of your body, with the waves of your heartbeat and everything like literally controlling the, the hurts, the frequency of your body. Okay. Now we're going into this paragraph, paragraph 19, the, the information that was given to you in paragraphs one through five is critical to understand what's going on in paragraph 19. Okay. They're basically saying that all the stuff that they taught you there in the beginning. Now, if you take that, this is why it's important, right? So anybody listening in the first episode or two, and they're like, what does all this shit mean? Okay, yes. You know, if you meditate or you you take drugs or you listen to a certain sound, you can get your body to to all to to basically consist of this frequency and work at this frequency. But why, why would you want to do it? Okay. You can get there, but how do you get there? This is the science of how you get there. This is exactly what it's talking about. If you can create a, a sine wave, a frequency wave as big as you need to, what was it? Planck's Planck's distance, right? If you can get something to break Planck's distance and you can create the, the peaks and the valleys of these sine waves to be consistent and, and very, very close to each other, then you're going to be able to perceive this other dimension as if it's, if, as if it's constant. Okay. That continuity will be perfect, perfect. But the, but what you have to do is you have to get these, these, uh, these sine waves to, to be really close to it. So you have to work at a very high frequency. Right. Okay. So what it, what it's also saying is that basically work, constantly blinking in and out of infinity or the absolute all the time right? right we just because kind of like what you were explaining with the electricity right like because it's not at a specific frequency right we can't necessarily see it happening right it's well going because too fast for us to, to notice or whatever's happening there well the problem is is that we're spending more time on the on the fall and the rise than we are at the peaks and the valleys right. that's the problem right now so, so that, we're experiencing that, our consciousness is experiencing the rising and the falling, but at yep. those points where it's blinking in and out, it's so we're, yep. we're just not there. We're just not. We're picking our, up. our reality, right? Basically there's these two worlds, the infinite and the physical, right? Is it, this is what they're explaining. The mm -hmm. infinite lives at the peaks and the valleys and, and the physical uh, lives at the, the, the rises and the drops. Now we want to perceive or in order to uh, experience this whole gateway process thing, we need to learn how to, to perceive the, the peaks and the valleys. And in order to do that, we need to break Planck's distance. But if we do not do that, and we do not get our bodies up to this correct, this, this specific frequency, then instead of seeing uh, the infinite at, a, at continuity, we will always perceive the physical at continuity because of how much time we spend on the rises and falls. This is 
Dude, th- this goes so deep, bro. Like you could talk about how back in the day they changed <clears throat> the standard recording frequency for music, mm-hmm. right? And how like now we're listening to music at this, you know, 440 hertz or whatever it is that's and it fucks you disruptive up, disruptive to our cells. Yep. But back in the day, it was 432 hertz, which is actually like the frequency that promotes like you know self uh, cell regeneration, all kinds of healthy shit, whole right? bunch of shit, healthy sleep. Right. healthy and, uh yeah memory so this, all kinds this is of one of the big reasons why i'm the conspiracy guy is because of this kind of shit right mm-hmm. it's because of the the frequency right it that's what you're when hippies say shit like raise your vibration bro right <laughs> like you need to raise your frequency bro like this is what they're meaning even if they don't understand what they're meaning what they're really talking about going back to paragraph one transcendental meditation drugs whatever it is when these when you reach this state of enlightenment or, you know, uh, altered states of consciousness, dude, you are, you are in a higher vibration. You are at a higher frequency, right? Your mind is. So all that hippie shit is actually legit, but they don't even realize it half the time. You know what I'm saying? Like right. to them, it's just the metaphysical, like raise your vibration, bro. I was like, no, 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 dude, you can literally raise your vibration and leave space time. This guy who sold me really good weed one time told me to raise my vibration. I've been using it ever since. <laughs> <laughs> but little little does he know that literally, according to this document, you can do it. You, you can, can raise your vibration and break free of the matrix. Right. And the the reason why I love this this document is because the science technically works in a lot of this, right? The physics works. Do we know that we can get to the peaks and valleys? No, we don't. But this this document is set up in a way that it makes you believe you can. Which is interesting. Super interesting stuff. I'm ready to keep going, man. This is this is a this is the best part of this document so far. <clears throat> All right, we can keep going. Where am I at now? 20? Jake, are you good? Yep. All right. Well, let me you basically said everything I was going to say. So, oh, well, then I'll let you talk. Sure, we did. With the exception of, you know, there's finite rabbit holes. We are the infinite rabbit uh, hole. Yes. 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 And it, it gave a reference to Alice. You know, I, that was that adventure. was cool. Yeah. <laughs> I perked up when I heard that. That was mm-hmm. that was nice. Of course you did. Anyways, <laughs> section twenty. Happy New Year. So happy New Year. Subatomic <laughs> particles. The behavior of subatomic particles provides an interesting example of the phenomenon of clicking out discussed in the preceding paragraphs. In an article prepared for the Science Digest magazine, Dr. John Gleedman mentions the way in which subatomic particles communicate with each other once their energy fields become entrained as a result of colliding with each other. The communication concerned I don't know if that's a typo. The communication concerned is, of course, postulated to be occurring during the click-out phase in the oscillation of the energy fields comprising the subatomic particles concerned. That was weird how they did that. Anyways, it is this, it is this cause which accounts for the cross-communication at what in terms of time-space velocities would seem to involve speeds in excess of light. In reality, Einstein's theory of relativity is not being invalidated, but rather the communication concerned is taking place outside the dimension of time space to which the theory of relativity is strictly confined. Specifically, Dr. Gleedman tells us quantum theory postulates a kind of long range Siamese twin effect whenever two subatomic particles collide and then go their different ways. Even when the particles are halfway across the universe from each other, it says they instantaneously respond to each other's actions. And in doing so, they violate relativity's ban on faster than light velocities. Indeed, regarding attempts to quantify what is known about the behavior of energies in dimensions apparently outside of time space, Bentov speaks out, courageous physicists who are working on hypothetical particles called tachyons, which can move at speeds higher than light. The speed of tachyon starts just above the speed of light and ranges all the way to infinite velocities. Now, hold on. Let's just take a second to realize that this document was written in the 80s. 
And now in 2023, we know what he is saying to be true. Hmm. You know, I wow. actually saw a YouTube video where they studied the speed of light by, uh, it was the uh, slow-mo guys. They went hmm. to a lab where they shot a, uh, a light particle through a water bottle and it would, you know, be able to be seen in the water bottle as it went through. Um, but they used a, a high speed camera that was at, shot at 2 million frames a second. And you could see this light particle going through the water bottle. And they're like, we are seeing the speed of light hmm. right here. It was, it was nuts. That is cool. I would love, I would love to see that. Um, they basically talked about quantum entanglement. That's this is exactly what they talked about. And to give you guys or to give those listening an idea of what quantum entanglement is, I'm reading a definition from the uh, website called The Conversation. And the question asks, what is quantum entanglement in simple words? The answer that the conversation is gives is in the simplest terms quantum entanglement means that aspects of one particle of an entangled pair depend on aspects of the other particle no matter how far apart they are or what lies between them so this is something that has been proven with quantum physics is that quantum entanglement exists no matter the physical distance between themselves if you if you do something to one particle the particle that is quantumly entangled to that particle will also show the effects, will also react. And this is this is the absolute 100% best evidence for multiple dimensions, including what they're talking about as the infinite, where physical distance does not matter. Particles live and, and work, exist within both our physical dimension and the infinite dimension. This is awesome stuff. This I love how they tied quantum entanglement. And this is funny because at, at the time that this was written, right, to know that they knew about this uh, is, is awesome because I don't even know if quantum entanglement was discovered then. Well, that's what we were talking about earlier, right? Like this shows, and again, this document was written in the early 80s, which means they were doing, he he was gathering this information probably in the 70s, right? So Mm -hmm. this goes to show, just like we were talking about earlier, they've been doing this kind of stuff long before we knew about CERN or anybody else doing this stuff in the 90s or the early 2000s. Yeah, that's fair. Hmm. Oh, and I misspoke. It wasn't 2 million frames a second. It was 10 trillion frames per second. Jeez. Or, that's yeah. awesome. That's technology there. That's cool. That's really freaking cool. But yeah, then they <laughs> then they even talked about uh, what was it? Einstein's theory of relativity, uh, basically, which has to do with gravity, you know, and and how light can bend around gravitational fields or gravitational objects, such as such as anything. <laughs> I'm not going to go into that, but how. Um, that is literally a time space phenomenon and outside of time space in the infinite uh, Einstein's theory of relativity doesn't exist. That's pretty cool. Very, very neat. Yep. Let's read one more and then I got a jet might have to make this one a little shorter than normal, but okay. let's do one more section, section 21, right? I saw you, oh. talking. I saw hey, you this... ta- talking to the ghosts in your room. Just a yeah. second ago. <laughs> so this is cool. You see the the picture that the diagram. Mm-hmm. I actually use this. In, Looks like an oscilloscope. It, that's what that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. This is literally uh, a reading from an oscilloscope. Someone just hand drew it. And you can see where they're reading right here. The the very top line that's the infinite, right? The very bottom line is the infinite. And then you have the two lines that are running parallel to them both at the top and the bottom, which is Planck's distance. So as long as you're above Planck's distance, the time that you spend above Planck's distance, you're in the infinite. That's really cool. I, I actually use this picture in the the YouTube for uh, analysis yeah. of Gateway Part 3. I saw that. That's there you really go. Cool. Yep, so that's what you want your brainwave to do. You yep. want your brainwave. You want to keep your brainwaves. You know, yep, see? And the high Course, frequency. It the says high when you're... Zone. When you're in the the falls and and the climbs, 
or the rises and falls, it says right here, portion of oscillating energy pattern in time space. That is why you perceive your physical space, your physical dimension, is because we spend most of our time below Planck's distance. Fucking fantastic stuff. That's good job, Jeff. This is a good one. Science rules. All right. Section 21 dimensions in between. <clears throat> now that we have postulated the legitimacy of the assertion that the energy forms which compose consciousness can move beyond time space dimension, we need to turn our attention to the energy forms which inhabit those dimensions between time space and the absolute. In so doing, we may better perceive the form that reality, quote, assumes when we encounter it in those intermediate dimensions. In this context, Bentov's, Bentov tells us that the casual relationship between events breaks down. Movements become jerky rather than smooth. Time and space may become grainy or chunky. Perhaps a piece of space can be traversed by a particle of matter in any direction without necessarily being synchronized with a piece of time. In short, a pair of events will occur in either time or space, the pair not being connected casually, but by a random fluctuation. What Bentov means is that inside the dimension of time-space, where both concepts apply in a generally uniform way, there is a proportional relationship between them. A certain space can be covered by energy moving in either particle or waveform in a certain time, assuming a specific velocity virtually anywhere in the time-space universe. The relationship is neat and predictable. However, in the intermediate dimensions beyond time-space, the limitations imposed on energy to put, in, put it into a state of oscillating motion are not uniform as they are in our physical universe. A myriad of various distortions and incongruities are thus likely to be encountered such that our nice, neat assumptions concerning the relationship between time and space as we know it in this dimension do not apply. But even more important, access is open to both the past and the future when the dimension of current time space is left behind. This just goes into what I already explained. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. About having uh, access to the knowledge of any anything along any time period, because time doesn't exist in the infinite. You just have access to it all. Right, yep. And that's what we talked about with the Akashic Records before, how mm -hmm. some people believe they can access what's known as the Akashic Records. It's some place in or somehow in your mind in the universe where you reach this point of what they're talking about here and you time doesn't exist. You have access to all information, mm -hmm. all history, past, present and future. And that's, that is what people talk about. That's the flow state. That's what a lot of artists talk about when you talk to or hear interviews about like these legend music artists or something. And they're like, Oh, how'd you come up with the, the song? And they're like, Oh, it came to me in the flow state. That flow state is a high vibration, vibrational state where, bits of information can come to you or it's like a dream state. Some people will wake up from a dream with an idea, right? Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, there's countless examples. I've, there's a general from the movie, you know, the men who stare at goats yeah. right at the end or at the beginning of somewhere, there's the general who was trying to like run through the wall, right? Mm -hmm. Like that, all of this shit, man. Uh, Einstein, I think it was Einstein or one of these geniuses used to fall asleep with like a, a lead ball in his hand, right? And that, that way when he would doze off, he would drop the ball, it would wake him up, and he would come up with his ideas. Because in that state, that right in between, you know, of you being like asleep and awake, like that's when your your brain is naturally at its highest point, right? With these peaks and valleys. So hmm. yeah. This hmm. is this is in long okay, so this is the Akashic Records before the Akash the term Akashic Records existed. Right. Yeah, the before infinite. the new age hippies got a hold of it. Yeah, yeah that's like what happened to me the other day. It's like yeah. when I when I brought up that podcast idea of doing those like short discovery, you know, stories and things like that. Mm -hmm. That was I was falling asleep and just about to doze off. I was like right in that moment, and then I had this eureka, and I had to roll over and start typing it out on my phone so I didn't forget. <laughs> See that? I at access the thing. 
that I don't believe exists. <laughs> well, I don't know. This, uh, you know, I wasn't big on the Akashic Records before this. But, I mean, again, got to take it with a grain of salt because it is the the Department of the Army's intelligence. But guess guess we're taking a vacation to the woods to drop some DMT. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. I think, I think a big problem with comprehending a lot of this <laughs> kind of stuff is just the terminology that is used, you know, depending on who you are and what your beliefs are and what your upbringing is and all these different things. Like the terminology just gets shifted around. But I think a lot of us are really talking about the same shit, you know, whether yeah. you're talking about accessing the, the infinite or the Akashic records or having some like spiritual experience where you're, you know, whatever, like I feel like in my perception of it, it's all kind of the same thing. It's just a different, you know, lens that we look at it with so that we label it in such a way. Right. So for mm. Jake, he might have a moment and be like, dude, I literally like had a, a, a spiritual moment, right. A, a religious moment. I spoke to or saw or had like this experience that I would equate to religion. Right. And for me, that could be the same exact experience. And I would just be like, yo, I fucking, you know, experienced the, what we're talking about here in this document or something, but it's the yeah. same experience. We just, have a different perception of it and what to call it. You know what I mean? I think that's a big thing too. All right. I'm done. Okay. Bye. Oh, <laughs> happy new year. Bye. Happy that's new it. Year. Okay. Jake, you're good. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Jeff, <laughs> I know you want to go cook some barbecue. I get it. I'm good, All man. Right. All right. Well, that has been another fantastic episode of the infinite rabbit hole. Happy New Year, everybody. We'll talk to you next time. <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs> you gotta say bye, Jeff. Bye.